So, um, what have I got? Let's have a quick look. I've got one of these. I've got one of these. I've got one of these. And I've got one of these. So we've got, uh, let's look at their resistance first. I've got an 8 ohm, a 1 ohm, a 3.3 ohm, and a 0 0.1 ohm. Now I'm not going to go into extreme depth with this, but if I was to put in this one here, 0 0.1 ohm, 4.2 divided by 0 0.1, it would let a ridiculous amount of current through. And um, I can't allow that. This probably wouldn't deal with such a crazy amount of current, so this one's going to go to straight, straight away. It's far too low resistance. This one, 8 ohms, this will be too much resistance, and um, this will be along the lines of this. Um, it's not really enough, although it does allow me to dissipate 100 watts, but it's still not enough. Um, it would discharge too slowly. Now, um, 1 ohm, again it will be silly, because if I was to get 4.2 volts divided by 1, that's 4.2 amps. So this, uh, when the cell is fully charged, will dissipate 4.2 amps of current. And um, that's just stupid, it's too much. And that leaves me with this one. This one is 3.3 ohm. And uh, that might do. So let's just try it out. So we've got, um, let's do it over here. So 4.2 divided by 3.3 ohm. And what is that? I'll just have to use my calculator. 4.2 divided by 3.3 is, yeah, 1.27. 1.27 amps. And that's okay. That, that sounds quite reasonable. To discharge this at just over an amp, that sounds good to me. And let's see how much current it would um, it would allow to pass through when it's discharged. 3.0 volts divided by 3.3. And I think that's going to be a 0 0.9 or something, but let's see. 3 divided by 3.3. Yeah, 0 0.91. 0 0.91 amps. So it looks like this resistor is ideal. Right, so I'm going to very roughly show you the circuit diagram. Now I don't actually know the full circuit diagram because I've not designed this before, I've not done it before, and I've not tested it. But anyway, this is what I think it will look like. So we've got the um, we've got the cell, of course. Um, so that's the cell. We need the load, so the load can go here. And we also need a transistor. The reason why we need the transistor is because we don't want this to uh, to be connected to a load all the time. When it reaches 3 volts, we definitely need this to stop. So we need some sort of automation, some way to switch this off automatically um, because it would damage the cell. So we need a transistor. So um, let's put a transistor in there. Um, and let's wire this up. So we've got the load, the transistor, and the cell. So the transistor here, the base pin would go to a microcontroller. Um, and that could actually be a digital pin. So let's say D1 or something like that. So I've got the cells and the cell holder. And I've got the resistor. The resistor says 10 watt 3.3 ohm, and J as well, J. But um, I won't bother with the J bit, but the 10 watt bit matters. So if we were to get the maximum voltage, which is 4.2 volts, and we were to get the maximum amperage, which is to flow through this, which was 1.3 amps from brightly, if you multiply one by the other, it gives about 5, five watts, something like that. So this is rated for 10 watts, so this resistor is fine. But you wouldn't get anything 5 watts or under, really. So we need a, a transistor now, so I've pushed that out of the way. We need a transistor. And the transistor that I'm looking for is called um, TIP41C. Oh, it might be these. TIP41C. And that's the one, so TIP41C. Right, what else? That's an NPN transistor, and it's perfect for what I want. Um, I'm actually low side switching. 
Low side switching means that I switch the side after the load and not before the load. And what it means is that I'm switching near zero volts. Whereas if I was to switch this around and, and switch here, I'd be switching uh, 4.2 volts. I'd prefer to switch low. Anyway, um, so we've got that. It would be useful if I had a switch to turn the device on. So I'd probably use one of these little tack switches. Oops, what's that there? I've got hold of. Probably use one of these tack switches. Uh, I'd probably need some LEDs. One LED to say discharging or something, and the other LED to say discharged, I would imagine. Um, maybe another one to say there's been an error or something, or whatever. Um, and of course, I will need a microcontroller. So, I don't know, I wouldn't really use the Uno, I wouldn't use the SG8266. Could use the Pro Mini, could use the Nano, hmm. I don't know, probably use the Nano, but whatever. So, um, as far as I know, that's all I need. But there's the basics anyway. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably read in from the plus here directly into the Arduino uh, in the A0 pin or whatever and I'll log the voltage because I know the voltage and the resistance, the resistance never changes uh, I can work out the current that passes through. So if I was to log the current um, that would be very helpful. So if I was to do that every second I could log, you know, there's 1.3 amps, now there's 1.29, 1.28 etc. Um, I could then work out the capacity. So you'd probably get it for each second, you'd probably add them all together and then you'd probably divide it by the amount of seconds which is passed until the voltage is 3 volts then you'd do some more mathematics to um, to work out the capacity which would be of course is measured in amp hour uh, or milliamp hour so you'd have to convert it in such a way that it would represent uh, an hour anyway um, there are my plans and um, I'll probably be working, working on this over the next week or two or whatever but um, anyway I thought I'd let you know and I thought I'd talk through this with you thanks for watching bye